Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to look at the properties and disposal of plastics. Let's first look at two classifications of plastics. Plastics can be sorted into th thermal softening and thermal setting. Thermal softening means that the plastic can be reshaped when you heat it up. This is useful for certain plastics such as plastic bottles which allows them to be reshaped after they've been used. Thermal setting plastics are those which cannot have their shape changed once you heat them up. This is useful for plastics where you need the shape to remain constant, such as things which need to be rigid, like light switches. Pause the video now and match the use to whether or not they are thermal setting or thermal softening. Nylon is a plastic which is used for clothing. This makes it very flexible and is therefore a thermal softening plastic. Urea formaldehyde is used for handles and electrical fittings. Both of these need to maintain their shape and therefore are thermal setting. Melamine formaldehyde is used for laminated worktops. For worktops, you would not want this to change its shape when you put something hot on top of it. This is a thermal setting plastic. Polystyrene is a familiar plastic used for packaging and containers. This is a soft plastic and is thermal softening. Plastics are an important substance. They are made from chemicals derived from oil, which means that we should try to minimise our use of plastics. Where this is not possible, we should then try to reuse plastics. Again, where this is not possible, there are different ways to dispose of plastics. Plastics can be disposed in landfill, by burning or by recycling. Most plastics do not biodegrade. This means that they do not break down naturally in soil or by weather. Therefore, they persist for a long time in the environment, making them a litter hazard. Biodegradable plastics have been developed. These plastics will break down in soil by action of microbes. This will turn the plastic into carbon dioxide and water. These plastics will break down more quickly in landfill than those which are not biodegradable. Sometimes rubbish is sent for incineration or burning. Plastics contain carbon and hydrogen. During complete combustion, carbon will turn into carbon dioxide. Due to the number of atoms in a plastic, often complete combustion is not possible. Instead, incomplete combustion, where there is not enough oxygen to burn the plastic, will take place. This will lead to different chemicals being released. Other elements present in a plastic will also lead to other gases being released. Where a plastic only contains carbon and hydrogen, carbon monoxide will be released during incomplete combustion. Where a plastic also contains chlorine, hydrogen chloride will also be produced in addition to carbon monoxide. Where there is also nitrogen present, you will get carbon monoxide and hydrogen cyanide being produced. Hydrogen cyanide is a toxic gas. Ideally, no plastics will be sent for incineration or landfill. If a plastic cannot be reused or avoided being used at all, then recycling is the best option to dispose of a plastic. On all plastics in the UK, you will find a symbol which looks like this. It's three arrows. Within the symbol, there will be a number. This number indicates what type of plastic is present. This allows you to help recycle different plastics. Most councils allow you to recycle plastics within your recycling bins now. Pause the video now and try this question. Thermal softening means that the plastic can be reshaped upon heating. Thermal setting means that the plastic cannot be reshaped upon heating. Biodegradable means that the plastic will break down naturally in the soil or weather. Non-biodegradable means that the plastic will not break down naturally. Pause the video now and try this question. This first plastic contains carbon and hydrogen. This will produce carbon monoxide on burning. This plastic also contains nitrogen. This means it will also produce hydrogen cyanide when it is burned. This next plastic contains only carbon and hydrogen. This will burn to produce carbon monoxide. The final plastic contains carbon and hydrogen and will produce carbon monoxide. It also contains chlorine, so will produce hydrogen chloride upon burning. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. 
Please remember to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of new videos. You can also follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem and Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry for updates on new videos and flashcards throughout the year. Bye for now.